We're with Eric Oaks at the Columbia River Knife and Tool, or AKA CRKT booth. And he's gonna show us three knives. He's got brand new knives coming out for 2020 with CKRT. Thank you so much for your time, Eric Oaks. See, he's a real guy, <laughs> not just his twin brother. So uh, tell us about your three knives. These are very exciting. All right, so we've got uh, the Avant Tac, which is a tactical version of the Avant, which came out uh, last year. So this new one is slightly larger blade length and a little more tactical oriented, textured handle and milling, a layered uh, liner there with uh, jimping for the back thumb. Good for you now lots of different handle positions, jimping on the spacer there for the reverse and so forth. Deep carry Double, pocket clip. Deep carry pocket satin clip. Satin blade. And so Double opener. Okay. Uh, flipper, flipper tab, and you know, thumb, thumb or forefinger flicker as I. Yeah, <laughs> I like to, to flick them. them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's a really nice design. Looks like it flows well. Deep carry. Uh, yeah, very nice. And about an EDCable size in my range, like three and a half inch yeah. blade, that yep. kind of thing. Good, good EDC size. Very nice. This one's a little bit larger. This is the APOC, as in uh, apocalyptic. It's a little bit of a Mad Max uh, flare. I've done some custom knives in the Mad Max flare, and so this was kind of a, a version to do a production style with the same kind of character and so forth. So once again, lots of texture, um, you know, Texture jimping on the blade. This is a modified Born Cliff, I guess I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with a raised swedge, and and then a textured G10 over uh, a wide or thick, a th little bit thicker uh, liner locks. So, um, but good flipper. Uh, this one seems to be. Uh, a gem, deep carry pocket clip. And IKBS. And IKBS. Nice bearings on the pivot, so it makes it a nice flipper. Is oh, it going to come in any different blade finishes or any yeah, different actually, colors? This one is the straight edge, but there's also a VEF finish. So oh, there's okay. the VEF serrations, which but are But it's going to be a black blade? Yep, it's a okay. black blade. It's all going to be that, and it'll be the same color G10? Yep. Same, okay. Yep. But it's got the uh, serrations here at the back of the blade. Nice thing about the tan G10, it's easy to dye. You can jump <laughs> it. You know, you can. You can dye it blue or red. Some of those things. Yeah, so it's fun. Cool. I do yeah. some of that. So that's nice. Neutral color. Yes. Right. And good contrast. I always like yeah. to try and get a little it's, bit of contrast. It's a bad boy. Going. It's a bad boy. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. Uh, grippiness around here too right right around the edge and, and that's yeah that's kind of uh, very primitive uh yeah back alley bad boy yeah there you yeah go. yeah it <laughs> is fun and speaking of you know back alley bad boy this is the shahala this is actually named after a, a mount a small mountain range between hillsboro and newburgh where i grew up um and so this one is kind of special to me because uh, I've done a lot of hammered finishes in the past and I wanted to see if I could translate that to a production knife. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, also I, probably a modified Bowie, I'd say, with the finger choil. And um, got a nice big thumb opener. So works well. Uh, Good for four flicking too, and then some contrasting hardware like spacer. on back spacer, yeah. And Deep carry pocket clip, right hand. Yep, right hand. Lanyard hole. Yep. Is that a lanyard hole or yep. yes, yes, it yeah, is it back is. there. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's a frame lock. Frame lock over carry. So you could flick it open. Uh, with your 
finger or thumb real easily. Right. And have a good <laughs> contact patch because you don't have a flipper tab. So, you know, when you make contact, you're right there. You're not like flipper right. tabs got you up. You're right there with it. So, yeah, that's nice. It looks like a very usable blade design. <laughs> yeah, well, I think so. Plus, like here, you know, it's good for those of us who have a little bit bigger hands. You know, with the four finger choil there. Yeah, very nice. And, uh, the hammered finish is interesting. It's fun, yeah. Yeah. Small knife, though. Easy to carry that totally. way. Totally. Yeah, great for your pocket. So. All right. Thank you so much, thank Eric. You. I appreciate love it. Them Three knives. new knives for 2020. <laughs> yeah, love them knives. Where is that guy? <laughs> Thanks. Right. Richard Rogers, who's a custom knife maker, but he did the CEO last year for a CRKT. Beautiful knife. Really small, nice and he does beautiful custom knives. Um, could you tell us about your two new knives that you're doing for CRKT this year? Okay, I have two knives with CRKT this year. The first one is the Montosa. It's a general purpose utility knife. Um, very thin and light. Has an ambidextrous clip. Grooves to uh, make sure you have a good grip. It opens via thumb stud, has a nice strong reinforced point, sharp enough to do detail work, but it's very strong because there's a lot of meat behind it. Uh, inlaid liner lock construction, it flips open or you can just use the thumb stud to rotate it open. Is that a aluminum backspacer that's anodized? Yeah, it's anodized aluminum backspacer and pivot collars. And that's nice. It accents around the pivots. Right and left hand deep carry? Yes. Pocket right and deep hand deep carry pocket clip. You just reverse it. How big is it? Is that like a three and a half inch blade? I not. I think it's about a three and a half inch blade. Yeah, it looks like it. It feels light it. though. Yeah, it's a very thin. It only has a inlaid lock and liner on one side, so it's very lightweight. It's uh, well balanced. Yes. It sits right where your finger is when you're cutting, so very easy to use. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, the second one we've got is the Inara. It is, again, a very thin, lightweight knife. It's a frame lock. The clip is not reversible on this, but it has opens via a thumb stud. It has the lines that accentuate. Very nice sharp tip for using it's a more of a gentleman's knife very easy to carry both of these will disappear in your pocket it's a frame lock oh no you're right yes and then a textured g10 with the grooves easy pass through looks like it's easy to disengage oh very i make stuff so you can use it with gloves on if you don't like the thumb stud, you can always just use the grooves on the blade to open it. So the fuller can be used as well. Right. Yeah. Right. That's nice. It's just got that curved flow to it, that continual. Right. Right. It's it's a really nice. Um, got a very nice visual feel to it. Does it have a? Oh, let's see the backspacer. Yes. Okay. And is that textured backspacer metal? No, this is a polymer, I think, okay. or aluminum. Like a G10? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Couldn't tell from here, but very nice finishing touch. Yeah, very. it's a very nice knife. It it just it flies open. It's nice not assisted. Yeah, very thin and light. You put it in a pocket, you'll never notice it's there. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you introducing your two new models. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Flavio Icoma flew in, especially just to be on my channel from Brazil. If you believe that, I got some swamp land in Florida. Okay, so he's going to introduce us into his new models with CRKT this year and end up with a big bang. Oh my God, that's just an incredible. That's his EDC. Believe it or not, just wait till the end of this. It'll blow your mind. Okay. Help us out here. Okay, so this year CRKT come up with the, my new model called the Lynchpin. We have that in two versions, the black with left serrations here. 
then we have the silver one, the satin finish one. It's a regular blade, plain blade. They both uses that bolt. That's the new locking mechanism I developed. That bolt is a real strong locking mechanism, very reliable, very safe to use. You don't have to put your fingers on the way of the blade to close that. It's, and you can make a flipper. You have an adjustable detent here, so you can adjust the tension of the detent, so it can flip the way you want it. And where's that adjustable part? Where is the area where you can adjust that? You can just use a T6 screw here, and you can adjust the tension of the detent. Uh, so okay. the detent in the dead bolt is not in the lock. So it works independently, so you can adjust that. If you want a flipper harder, you make it tighter, so it's gonna be a harder flipper. Or if you want to, to have a folder that you can open with the thumb stud, you can make it uh, lighter, so you can adjust it. All that bolts are like that. So okay. All that bolt model can be adjusted. Okay. Great. Also, also that bolt is also coming in other models here as you can see this is not this is not a design of mine this was designed by TJ Schwartz so he he had this idea of putting a power cord on the on the handle you know to wrap the handle with a cord but it was not really possible because most of the time when we're talking about a liner lock or frame lock the lock is here so it would be really difficult for him to do that since that bolt takes only the space of your thumb you see it's pretty much your thumb that's the, the lock you know so he has all the rest of the handle to do his, 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 his magic you know so this here doesn't really require you to disassemble the phone you can change all that without disassembly. Without disassembly, yeah. okay. He actually has a video show how he does that. And that bolt allows for that. That's the Paris scale. So also with that bolt, it also has the adjustable detent here. See under the wrap here, you have okay. to move this a little bit. It's, so you can dress it up however you want. Exactly. And uh, it's a non-flipper as you can see. So this way you can adjust that to be not so strong. So you can easily open that with your thumb. Very nice. And also, people have been asking for smaller dead bolt knives. So, as you can see, we managed to do smaller versions using a different size of the locking mechanism. Now we have a medium size and even a small size folder. This, this small one here was designed by Keith Carson. It's called the M40. It's a pretty small knife, and even though we were able to, to install that bolt on that, they have all the features and advantage of that bolt. It's easy to operate. It has the adjustment here. You don't have to put your fingers on the way of the blade to close. Very nice. So, large, medium, small, yeah, small. Yeah, exactly. in the dead bolt. Yeah, the dead bolt. We have two sizes of locks right now. I see another dead bolt. It's even yeah. bigger. You have this, of course. This this was released last year. This is my personal EDC. Yeah, I like big <laughs> knives, you know. So. This is the one that was released last year. This is called the Shock. You know, the folder itself, it, it's a, it, it is a massive folder, but not necessarily because it's a long folder. It's not much, much bigger, but it's a very robust folder, as you can see. So it's four and a quarter. It's yeah, it's huge. It's really made to be used heavy, you know. So you can do some some heavy work with that. I've been making some tests on it. And it's CTS XHP blade, yeah, yeah, titanium. CTS, yeah, it's pretty all premium. So you have a carpenter steel on the blade. This is titanium. This is carbon fiber. I, I put this this abrasive stuff here myself, but it's ah. all carbon fiber, titanium. It's all titanium carbon, carbon fiber in the handle, and the blade is XHP, CTS. Oh. That is a monster. Oh yeah, yeah, it it's is. a monster. But I, I know I'm biased to say, but I've been carrying that every day, man. No one knows that, and I don't feel it's so heavy, you know. Uh, and you can use that to do anything you want, you know. So, <laughs> what do you say you do with that knife? Well, I clean my nails with that mostly, you know. So, <laughs> use for that, use it for that use. Right? Of course, of course, that would be what you'd use. <laughs> yeah, it for. of course. Yes, I mean, what else? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. That that's a monster. That's a monster. I don't know. I'm, I I think I, I'm gonna have to have one of those. I'll do what I can to get one on my channel. That's definitely. I like large knives too, and yeah, that like is that's knives. a beauty. I love that design. Is that your design? Yes, my design. Oh my it's god. X O C. X O C. You say shark like shock. the same way you say. Shock. Uh, it's similar to the word shark. Some people believe the word shark came from this word. You know so. Yeah, that's just a beast.
It's a beast. And let me see. Oh, hey, it fits my hand perfectly. Yeah, it doesn't fit your hand. It's not, it's not that. It's not that big. Once you'll start carrying and using that. Dead bolt. Big. Don't yeah. get your fingers in the yeah, way. Don't get your fingers in the way. Adjustable. And yeah, it's a flipper. Oh, there you go. It's possible, but it's more like a flipper. Yeah, yeah, it is more like a flipper. Yeah, but you can flipper. still finger flick yeah, it out, can, even though can. those are up. Is and that you can adjust the detention. That's not an actual stop there, though, is it? It's a stop pin and thumb it, stop. Okay. So if you want to use a thumb stop, you have to adjust the detent to be a little bit weaker. That's pretty nice, though. You got it adjusted pretty well. Wow. Here you go. Good luck. That's a monster. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you guys I really much. appreciate it. CRKT Booth 2020 Shot Show. Who's that guy? Bryce. It's He's going to tell us about the Provoke. So, the Provoke, we released it last year, an extremely popular karambit by Joe Caswell. It really solves a lot of the shortcomings of traditional folding karambits as the blade deploys out the back using these two arms, which we call our kinematic opening system. This edition specifically is our imperial white color. We've had a couple different colorways. The original one came in all black, but we're really excited to offer a bunch of different colors um, to match your kit or your pocket dump, whatever you like, or just your personal preference, you know? Yeah. I just really like this one. I think uh, we Cerakoted the handle as well as the blade. I think it just looks really clean. Just a really fun fidgety knife, also a very, very purpose-driven tool, but for me, it's just kind of a fun fidgety box opener. <laughs> but in the right hands, somebody, it could be a very serious tool. I mean, Joe Caswell is just a very intelligent designer, really brilliant in uh, mechanical engineering, and he decided to take it upon himself to solve, a, solve an issue that he saw in a specific type of uh, karambit. Real simple, all you use is your thumb, but if you're pressing here, you see the arms open up the back, and the blade deploys away from your palm. Is great. Your traditional karambits will fold over your hand, which necessitates using a pocket catch or you have to readjust and use a thumb stud. But this saves you a lot of time, and you can even have the blade in your hand concealed until you need it, and the blade is there. A lot of smart little features on there. The pocket clip lays flush until you depress this area, and you can see the lip raises up, and that'll go over your pants material. But beyond that, when it's flat, it doesn't give you any hot points in your hand. You won't even feel that pocket clip. Um, the body of this is all made of aluminum, so it's lightweight but strong. The blade is D2 tool steel, so it'll take an edge and hold it for a long time. Just a really cool design from Joe, and um, I'm hoping we see a whole lot more from him in the future because I'd like to see his take on just modern folders, just outside, of the, even outside of the karambit world. So, show me the back side of that knife again. So it's mostly white then, except for the pocket clip, right? Yeah, pocket and clip. And it's imperial. Imperial white, yeah. Very cool. Unlike some people, this one won't miss. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. It's taking time to stop by and talk to us. CRKT Booth, Austin McLawn, who has designed a couple of knives he wants to tell us about. And the proceeds of these knives, right, goes to support a very good cause. Tell us about it. Well, uh, Several years ago, CRKT came out with an idea some people have been kicking around. It's called Forged by War Program, where they take soldiers, with disabled veterans with their combat experience, and they take their designs to make tools for the next generation of warfighter, cops, defense-minded citizens. But they wanted to do something special. 10% of the proceeds from the sale of these knives goes to the charity of the maker's choice. Uh, this blade was for the Green Beret Foundation, and this one is for Operation Oath. It started out with the fixed blade. Uh, I had an incident in Iraq where uh, I could not access my knife and it was a pretty hard day. And after that I designed this knife to ride right behind your magazine pouches on the IBA. If you're engaged in close quarters, if someone is wrestling with you with your long gun, you can trap it to your body, gross motor skill out of the sheath, ask them politely to let go, put it back and transition back to your M4 or saw and get back into business. Well. The first year this was in production, uh, it was for the Green Beret Foundation. No one had ever heard of the program. We've sold out three or four times throughout the course of that year. And we raised seven, about $17,000 with this and Elmer Rosh's tomahawk for the Green Beret Foundation. Since then, overall, the entire program's raised roughly $150,000 to support Green Beret Foundation, Purple Heart Homes, uh, the guys over at Oath. It's really great to be able to give back because the veterans themselves, most of us do this 
for the outlet, the, the way it helps us focus. When I got blown up in Iraq, I had a hard time dealing with it when my unit went back to Afghanistan because suddenly I have friends dying and I'm not there to help them, guys that were my Joes. So making tools like this helped me feel like I was still part of the fight and I was still relevant. Well then as I transitioned out, got better, I became a uh, law enforcement officer and a lot of departments like ours won't let you carry a fixed blade. So we converted and made it into a D2 tool steel folder with the deadbolt technology. Gives you all the capabilities that you have from the fixed blade, but in a little more policy friendly. It's also a hair shorter to make it legal more places like uh, California and things that have blade length requirements. This is another really cool knife, the Lynch pin. Uh, Lynch pin, I believe, also has the D2. One thing it gives you is a more straight profile and these VEF serrations. Now, this also got the deadbolt technology, which is the strongest lock I've ever seen. When this was invented, they took the first knife they did it in, and they put it on a scale to try to break it. They just had a winch to it. It took 5,300 inch pounds to make it fail, and the lock itself didn't fail, the blade broke. So it's really cool. I mean, you can hang a Harley Davidson from one of these things. They're all really good tools. I guess I can talk about this. This is my original handmade prototype yes. when I was turning this into this. So you can see a lot changed with the incorporation of the deadbolt and this really low profile clip. When you have this in your pocket, that's all you can see. It looks almost like a pen, like one of those tactical yeah. pens. Only it's a fairly substantial blade. But yeah, it's really great to talk to you guys and tell you about the Ports by War program. Every year they come out with three or four new designs and uh, we're very excited this year to be supporting Operation Oath. Those guys are amazing. They take guys who've you know, been blown up and hurt, don't have legs, and they take them and their whole family on these world-class fishing excursions, hunting trips, whatever they've been wanting to do, because the, and they counsel them. So life has changed, and you got a raw deal. But you can still have a great life and enjoy stuff, and this let us show you how. It's a really great organization. Uh, as soon as I heard about their mission, I had to be a part of it. We've got a knife, it's the Dewhawk. Uh, that came out actually last year, and it's a Karambit. This one I custom Cerakoted because why not? This supports Purple Heart Homes. Purple Heart Homes, you got these 19 year old kids who no job history, no credit, now they got no legs. Gets them off the street, gets them into houses that Bank of America you know, donates for the tax write off. They do incredible work. Or if you've got a house and suddenly now you need a wheelchair accessible, they lower counters, widen doors, wheelchair ramps, get the air conditioner situation together. For three years, they pay like the interest on the house and let you get finance classes, teach you about how to manage your money. At the end of that three years, just get the house. You know, it's like, don't worry about the bill, you already paid it. I mean, I was in tears when I heard about uh, Darren Soroy, another one of the Forge by War designers, telling me about this program. And I met some people that have helped him. It's just, there's nothing else I'd rather do than be a part of something like this. Because at the end of the day, if you pay a hundred bucks for a knife, it's probably a pretty good knife and it'll cut things. When you buy in the Forge by War program with CRKT, you get a great tool, a great warranty, and it's user driven. People just like you and the missions and jobs that you've had came up with these to solve solutions to problems they encountered. And still, you get to help the charities. So your, your dollar isn't just going to a corporation, it's helping people that need it. No one's ever going to help veterans as much as other veterans because we all know with the stories about the VA, how that shakes down. Listen, Richard, I want to thank you for coming over here and talking to me about these knives. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Austin. All right. I hope you have a great place. We'll shut you.